Hey Alisa, so here's how we make foldable structures in Grasshopper. First, you model something in Rhino. Anything you want, this can be mesh or NURBS, doesn't really matter, even curves will do. Then you have to make sure that you mark with points certain pivots, basically the, the hinges that are going to be on your design. And then you go to Grasshopper and load in this little bit of component that I will link down below. Uh, then let's go to the side view make things a little bit more easy to understand and then there have we have several inputs over here so first of all is geometry basically we'll have to use a single component for every element that is going to move so let's start with this seat right here so that will be the geometry so I'm just going to create a geometry node set multiple geometries and just connect it here next one we have to make sure that we mark the pivot so I'm going to create a point container, set one point, connect it here. Then there's the max angle on which we want to rotate this thing. This has to be either a uh, either 90 degrees or minus 90. We'll have to figure that one out. And then, yeah, it's 90. No, it's actually, we can probably do more. We can probably do 100. Yeah. That's about right. And the T is basically the slider that will allow us to control this rotation. So this will be the slider going from 0 to 1 with three decimal places. So with this thing, we can now rotate the structure like this. Now, let's do the same thing, but for the leg down below. So to do that, we have to copy this component along with everything else. We delete the slider because we can use the first one. Uh, the geometry is no longer the seat, but uh, the leg over here. I'm setting multiple geometries because I'm basically selecting this leg and the one that's behind it. So then the pivot point, set one point, it's going to be this one. And the angle of rotation, I guess it's 45 degrees. So let's see how it works. No, it has to be minus 45. Okay. So if we preview both things, we can see that they fold like that. So the next thing is a little bit more tricky. To make sure that this, uh, the, fir the second leg actually rotates well, we need to first make it rotate and then connect it to the first one because there's no use for it if it's just going to spin in place. But let's start by making just that, making it spin in place. So we copy this component over here uh, as geometry, set multiple geometries, and select the other legs, uh, the degrees, let's keep them the, uh, the way they are, we'll adjust them later, and then the point is going to be this one. This one is probably going to be about 90 degrees so that it folds flat in relation to the original uh, leg or I guess it's um, no I guess it's maybe yeah maybe it's just 90. Now yeah, we'll figure it out later. So that's the thing and it does the rotation. Let's preview. Yep, 90 degrees, that works. So now the problem is that while other objects move where it's supposed to, this one just stays in place. So in order to make it move, we need to make sure that after we had this last leg rotate, we actually feed this geometry by holding the shift button back into the previous leg which means that it is going to be rotated first here and then together with that lag. So that would allow us to, let's just combine it all into one container, geometry. So we're gonna use this one and that one. We do not need to connect that lag because it already passes through this node right here. So this is our geometry. And so this is what we do. 
Now, in order to preview, I would also add another bit of geometry, which will reference the, the back seat. Set multiple geometries, and obviously there will be no rotation, so it's just going to be passed to this thing. And then here we can use the custom preview node, like so, to just be able to see everything. Now we go for the render view, and we make sure that we disable the original model so we don't see that. And that's basically how it's done. Now, if you're curious what's actually going, going on inside this node, you can take a look. It's quite simple. It takes a, uh, a point, turns it into a axis, and then basically wraps around the geometry. It does a little bit of math to transform um, degrees into the radians, because radians is what these, uh, these things are working with, uh, these nodes. They rotate in radians, and basically it's doing the same thing three times in a row. So yeah, I'll make sure to link both these files down below so you can play around with it, but that's pretty much it.